Gusen was one of the most brutal German concentration camps of World War II. It was built with one motive in mind, the murder of those deemed inferior by the Nazis. Jews, communists, and enemy prisoners of war were transported there, never to know freedom again. But unlike other German extermination centers, gas chambers were rarely used at Gusen. Guards resorted to other sadistic methods to eliminate captives, seeking out those capable of causing terrible agony before death. From cruel experiments to drowning, nothing proved too extreme for Hitler's macabre men. Today, in this new military history video, we'll tell you all about Gusen, the brutal Nazi concentration camp. They see the woodshed where lime-covered bodies are stacked in layers and the stench is overpowering. The construction of this terrible place took place before the start of World War II. By the latter half of the 1930s, Adolf Hitler was already comfortably in power in Germany. In defiance of international treaties that had been in place since the end of World War I, the Fuhrer had ordered the modernization and expansion of the National Armed Forces. The army grew from 100,000 men to over 3 million, while aircraft, tanks, and heavy artillery began to be produced at a tremendous rate. Everything was in place to carry out the expansion plans that the Nazi leaders had devised, but the first conquests were made without bloodshed. Austria was the initial target. Most of its inhabitants were in favor of unification with Germany, but the winners of the Great War, England, France, and the United States in particular, had forbidden it. This did not matter to Hitler, who was increasingly defiant towards the Western powers. On March 12, 1938, the Germans marched their men and tanks through the streets of Vienna, announcing that Austria would now be part of the Third Reich. This became known as the Anschluss, meaning annexation. The Austrians offered no resistance and much of the population cheered the union between the two countries. Those of Aryan descent had reason to do so as they now belonged to a more advanced and powerful nation, elevating their race above all others. But the Jewish population, communists and others deemed undesirable would soon realize the terror of living under the Nazi yoke. Two days after the annexation, the Gestapo, the German secret police, set up an office in the Austrian capital. From there, they oversaw the thousands of arrests that took place in the new territory. Initially, prisoners were deported to the Dachau concentration camp, established in the south of Germany in one of the first such centers. This was where the most vocal political dissidents, Jews, Roma, homosexuals, and common criminals ended up but the large number of inmates soon led the Nazi authorities to plan the construction of another camp within the territory of Austria. In March 1938, men from the SS, the German organization in charge of the security of these inhuman places, chose the site where the infamous Mauthausen concentration camp would be erected. A few months later, it became operational. Those held there were forced to work in the quarries of the area, extracting granite, in unsanitary conditions, with little food, water, or rest hours. Deaths were not long in coming. After the Anschluss, the Germans continued to add territory to their growing empire, now with the acquisition of certain regions of what was Czechoslovakia. Although Hitler also defied the European powers in doing so, he met no resistance. But this was about to change. On September 1, 1939, the Nazis invaded Poland, and this time, the locals fought back, thus beginning World War II. However, the Poles could do little to stop the German advance, and they had to sign the surrender a month after hostilities began. The Gestapo and other security forces were quick to implement the protocol they had already carried out in Austria. Jews and other enemies of the Reich were reported en masse and sent to the various concentration camps spread throughout German territory and that of its conquests. The growing number of prisoners forced the Germans to also expand the facilities within the centers, establishing subcamps 
One of them, perhaps the most brutal, was Guzen, just five kilometers from Mauthausen. Originally established to increase the productivity of the slave laborers at the camp, it was located closer to the quarries where they carried out their forced labor. By January 1940, there were already 400 prisoners held there, including a number of Poles, both civilians and captured soldiers, as well as Austrians brought from Mauthausen. As expected, the people who worked at Gusen did so in terrible conditions, under the constant cruelty of the SS guards. The cold at that time was devastating, often reaching sub-zero temperatures. Even so, the prisoners had no access to coats or even gloves to protect their hands with which they mined the quarries. The fires that were lit for warmth were only for the Nazis, and anyone who got too close to them risked being beaten. Between December 1939 and April 1940, nearly 2,000 people died working at Gusen, most of them victims of the brutal conditions to which they were subjected by their captors. Others also died directly from out-of-hand beatings or outright summary executions. These practices, so common in the following years of the war, were not yet so established among the guards. But this did not mean that they never happened. SS members were chosen for their cruelty, and they never missed an opportunity to vent their fury on the prisoners. In addition to torture by the Germans, they also had to deal with the Kapos. This was the name given to prisoners who collaborated with the Nazis, and they supervised the common inmates. They were often more cruel than the guards themselves, showing off the little power they had there. Some of the carpers inside of Gusen were infamous for their brutality. For example, one named Wolf executed prisoners by hanging them, and then also stamped on their bodies. Another took part in gassing inmates. Faudhausen and its sub-camp Gusen were the only camps in the entire Nazi territory designated as Category 3. This was the worst classification, stating that all those sent there were criminals with no hope of being re-established in society. Their guards were therefore explicitly allowed to work them until they dropped dead and to be as brutal as they wanted. At Gusen, conditions were even worse than at the main camp. Between 1940 and 1941, the life expectancy of prisoners was barely six months. The incredible shortage of food meant that the average weight of prisoners was barely 40 kilograms. Deaths from starvation reached levels unimaginable. Added to this was the poor hygiene of the place. The detainees were hardly given the opportunity to wash themselves, so the barracks were in a constant state of filth, making it prone to the spread of disease. Added to the prisoners' low defenses due to Goosen's non-existent nutrition, epidemics soon took their first toll. At the end of 1941, people began to fall ill with typhus, something very common in German concentration camps. The infected numbered in the thousands, but the Germans never made any effort to cure them. Instead, anyone who showed symptoms was separated from the rest and executed, either by firing squad or euthanasia. That was the only solution the Nazis were willing to offer. While it may seem counterproductive that as Gusen was a forced labor camp, the Germans were so willing to eliminate its labor force, there is an explanation for this. The reality was that even though these tasks were carried out, their primary function was the extermination of its population. But unlike others, such as Auschwitz, the main method of mass murder was not the gas chamber, but labor exploitation. Prisoners literally worked themselves to death in the granite quarries. As one group died, others were brought in from different concentration centers, keeping the number of detainees roughly constant, generally around 6,000 or 7,000. This number exceeded the capacity of Gusen, which had been planned for around 5,000 people at most. The overcrowding added to the terrible conditions already mentioned above to make this camp a living hell, as one survivor recounts next. Life in the hospital was very hard for us because we had no medical cures. We had very little food to eat. 
We were kept in a, in a small room, three, four, and one bed, with uh, very much dirt and no possibility to wash. And uh, we had uh, very often, we had, uh, very many died every day. In our room, for instance, uh, about uh, 50 men we were, and uh, each day three or four men used to die, sometimes even more than that. <coughs> From almost its opening until early 1943, Goosen was run by Commandant Karl Chmielewski. According to survivors' accounts, he was an extremely cruel man who enjoyed torturing the prisoners in his charge. Instead of delegating tasks, he himself beat, abused, and murdered the people held there. It was quite normal for him to do this while completely intoxicated. Under his rule, life at Goosen was characterized by violence and sadism. Half of those sent there died during his brutal regime. In 1943, he was replaced as commandant by Friedrich August Seidler, who did not approve of his predecessor's indiscriminate and arbitrary punishments. But if the prisoners thought that this would end their ordeal, they were gravely mistaken. Seidler preferred what he called Prussian-style brutality, in which he administered martial-style punishments to anyone who broke his rules, as if they were members of the military. Instead of beatings, Prisoners who broke Nazi rules were now subjected to whippings, for example. The end result, however, was often death, as was the case with Chmielewski. Another common punishment was the removal of the day's rations in a place where a meal could mean the difference between life and death. For major offenses, such as escape attempts or assaults on guards, the prisoner was sentenced to the firing squad. The number of those killed may have decreased under Seidler's rule, but Goosen remained a brutal and sadistic place until the end of the war. Even macabre experiments on prisoners were carried out. It was common for the Nazis to test new medicines or drugs in the concentration camps, as they did not care if the tests went wrong and the person died. The best known of the Nazi doctors was Josef Mengele, who carried out most of his dark experiments at Auschwitz. In Gusen, they were under the supervision of the physician, Helmut Fetter. Beginning in 1944, the Nazis conducted tests to study the effects of tuberculosis on the forced patients, with the aim of developing cures. To do this, infected pus was injected into the lungs of healthy people. The victims were then forced to run non-stop for hours on end until they collapsed from exhaustion. Completely weakened, benzene, one of the components of gasoline, was injected into their lungs, causing a slow, agonizing death. Throughout this torture, the effects were closely studied. Besides being horribly cruel, these tests were useless, as no useful results were achieved. It was simply another way of adding useless deaths to the Germans' long tally. After the murder, the bodies were taken to the crematorium, which was soon overwhelmed by the number of bodies. The general and his party next see the crude woodland crematory, actually a grill made of railway tracks. Here, the bodies of victims were cremated. Charred remains of several inmates still lay heaped atop the grill. The SS guards also arranged certain distractions from their duties, all with a dark side. On Sundays, for example, football matches were organized between the captives for the enjoyment of the members of the security team. The participants received more rations, but the exhausting exercise in the state of hunger in which they were often found often ended up weakening them even more, which did not bother their captors at all. In 1942, a brothel was also opened in Gusen for the exclusive use of Germans. The aim of this was to prevent the guards from having relations with the male prisoners, since homosexuality was seen as a crime and an aberration. In the brothel, Ten female captives considered to be Aryan were selected and coerced into working there. In return, they were promised that after a time they would be released, but none were. Most ended up being forced to join the female SS Corps when the war began to turn against Germany. It was mentioned earlier that Gusen's main function was to exterminate those deemed undesirable. Those selected for death at Mauthausen were also sent there. As soon as they arrived, the guards made them run to check their physical condition. Those who could not keep up were eliminated in various ways. This was the fate of a third of the first 10,000 prisoners transferred to Gusen. <laughs>
the gas chambers were built here only at the end of the war, the guards resorted to more inventive and cruel ways of killing the captives. One of them, widely used in the winter, was to force people to stand all night in the open air, without shelter or food. Sometimes they were even ordered to strip. It was normal for half of them not to survive until morning. Those who did, incredibly weakened, usually died within the next day. One method uniquely used at Gusen was the death baths. Prisoners were forced to stand under extremely cold showers until they died. Drains were blocked, so the water level continually rose. If the person tried to avoid being covered in the liquid, the guards did the dirty work themselves and drowned them. This agonizing process could take hours. It was as inefficient as it was cruel and was never used elsewhere. This did not stop German sadists from continuing to use death baths, although they often falsified records to attribute another cause to the prisoner's death. Yes, the SS Sanitaire took the people mm -hmm. in the bathroom there and with cold water, 20 minutes, during 20 minutes, he made a, a cold, uh, cold bath. A cold bath, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Whipping and, yeah, well, uh, an SS and, and knocking and yes, knocking. The SS man himself. The SS man himself, you understand? And next day, we had uh, many casualties, and a third of this, uh, these people were dead. In 1945, during the final months of the war in Europe, a gas chamber similar to those used in other camps, albeit of a smaller capacity, was designed. It was rarely used, and only about 1,100 deaths are attributed to it. Total murders at Gusen reached over 35,000 people, with about a third of these occurring in the last year of the war. By this time, approximately 25,000 prisoners were housed at Gusen. Most were suffering from some kind of disease, whether it was tuberculosis, pneumonia, or typhus. Almost all were in a terrible state of malnutrition, extremely thin and weak. They were known as Musulman by the German guards. Due to the overcrowding of the camp, they were forced to sleep three to a bunk which only increased the spread of epidemics. With the end of the war approaching, the top authorities at Gusen decided to eliminate all prisoners from the camp once and for all. To do this, they had the terrible idea of sending them into the quarry tunnels, and once there, detonating them with dynamite, locking them inside. Explosives were placed at two of the five entrances, but fortunately, the Nazi chain of command collapsed and the order to carry out this mass killing never arrived. In the first days of May 1945, with the Fuhrer already dead, several of the SS guards began to desert their posts, since they saw no reason to continue carrying out his directives. Gradually, the prisoners realized that there was no one left to control them, and that they were practically free. Those who were in better condition left Gusen, entering Austrian territory in search of help. Many others, however, were too weak to move. Fortunately for them, American soldiers arrived at the concentration camp on May 5th. The few remaining SS members did not hesitate to surrender. Yet as they entered Gusen, the Americans encountered horrific scenes. Not only were there many dead whose bodies were never cremated, but also the few survivors, many of whom had gone mad, were killing each other with the weapons the Nazis had left behind. In addition, the weakest had been locked in the barracks by the guards as a final act of cruelty, without access to food or water. By the time the Allies managed to unlock the doors, the vast majority had already died. They also witnessed how the prisoners executed those accused of collaborating with the Nazis by their own hand. Several of these committed suicide when they saw the bloodthirsty mobs advancing on them, while the rest were mercilessly murdered. After order was restored, investigations began to accuse those most responsible for the cruelties that occurred there. Dr. Vetter, in charge of the tuberculosis experiments, was sentenced to death. Chmielewski managed to escape and live under a false identity until 1959, when he was discovered and sent to prison for life. Several were tried and faced harsh sentences, but it is a fact that most of the guards at Gusen, many of whom were directly responsible for murders, ended their days free. We have reached the end of the video, and we want to ask you, what do you think is the most brutal thing about Goosen?
Leave us your answer in the comments box below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more events that left their mark on history.